Now, I'll start off with a rendition of Frank Sinatra on my way right now. <laughs> okay, welcome. My name is ben, Benjamin Cuellar. Uh, and for those who aren't aware, the California Social Work Hall of Distinction was formed in 2002 by the California Social Welfare Archives, known as CSWA. CSWA is an organization supported by the USC School of Social Work and the USC Libraries which is committed to preserving and making available historically significant documentation and oral histories, which chronicles California's health and social welfare challenges and programs. For those of you who I'm sure are aware, USC means the University of Southern California. The, the Trojans in the room won't forgive me if I didn't say that. The Hall of Distinction was created to honor individuals who have made outstanding contributions to California's social welfare and the social work profession. Since its inception seven years ago, 55 social work pioneers have been honored. I hope that you had a chance to view the slideshow showing the previous inductees. Tonight, we will add five new, more leaders in our field to the selective and impressive group. Today's nominees were nominated by their colleagues and peers and then selected by the Hall of Distinction Committee, which is com comprised of a wide range of social work professionals from throughout the state of California. With us today are several, several members of our committee. Ellen Dunbar, PhD, MSW, Professor Emeritus of CSU Stanislaus. Um, <laughs> Suzanne Peck, MSW Ambassador, International Federation of Social Workers. <laughs> Esther Gillies, MSW, LCSW, USC President. Colleen Friend, PhD, LCSW at CSU Los Angeles. Joseph Nunn, PhD, UCLA Department of Social Welfare. <laughs> Former NASW California Social Worker of the Year in 2000. Jan Lee Wong, MSW, Executive Director, NASW California. <laughs> Monica White, I'd like to introduce our Master of Stone Romney for this, this evening. With, she has an MSW and a PhD from the USC School of Social Work. Monica has served on the board of the California Social Welfare Archive for almost 20 years. She's a nationally recognized author and lecturer in the field of aging. Dr. White recently retired as the president and chief executive officer of the Center for Healthy Aging in Santa Monica, California, and was an adjunct professor of gerontology at the UC Davis School of Gerontology. Monica, come up here. Good evening. I need to do this like this. Can you hear me? All right. It's really an honor for me to serve as your MC this evening. We feel so privileged to, um, by, by the achievements and the accomplishments of the people in our field, and it's a privilege to honor them in a, in a public uh, venue. Uh, this is always a, a special event, and we look forward to it every year. So now with our five new inductees this year, we will have 60 uh, inductees. Every one of them uh, just has proven to be so valuable to so many of them. Before I start uh, with the induction, I would like to uh, introduce Mariko <coughs> Yamada. We're, we're very privileged. State Assemblywoman. <coughs> Assemblywoman uh, Yamada has her MSW from USC and is a former Yolo count, uh, County supervisor. I'm going to ask uh, Ben Cuellar to come back up here uh, in a moment, uh, but I want to tell you a little bit about him. Uh, he has his DSW in social welfare from Columbia University and an MSW from uh, University of California at Berkeley. 
Since January of 1995, he has been the Dean of the College of Health and Human Services in the California State University in Fresno and was responsible for successfully managing the school, which offers seven undergraduate programs, six graduate programs, eight certificate programs, and five credential offerings. Whew, that's a lot. Um, just yesterday, Ben celebrated his retirement from Cal State uh, Fresno. So we want to add our congratulations, Ben. I'm going to ask you to come up and present our first inductee. Our first inductee is Manuel Fimbres, a great person, a great human being. I had the privilege uh, so long ago, about 32 years ago, was it 35, 36 maybe, of being uh, a student who was being supervised by Manuel Fimbres. I was a student at UC Berkeley. And uh, he was the uh, best supervisor that anybody could have. And I still remember fondly uh, his mentoring, his insights, and his advocacy for me and other students. Uh, it made a big difference for me, other students, as well as for my family. Uh, Manuel has many, many accomplishments, many, many firsts. Uh, I was there at some of them, but I've uh, missed out on a lot of them over the last 35, 36 years. Uh, he was the first Latino president of NAW California. He was a founding member of the social work program at San Jose State, which was uh, focused on uh, training social practitioners to work with the Latino community. He was the uh, co-founder of the um, National Chicano Planning Council. He was the founding member of the National Minority AIDS Council. He was the uh, associate director of the Social Planning Council at Santa Clara County under, where I served uh, under him. He's been a fighter and advocate for social justice and against social inequalities. He still is very, very busy. He's serving as a volunteer and he's uh, working very actively in the field of aging, helping some um, senior citizen programs. Uh, I uh, don't know where he's gotten all his energy and where he still has all the energy, but uh, he's the perfect candidate for the California Social Work Hall of Distinction. And I think, uh, Manuel, you better come up here and get your uh, award. And you are expected to say a few things. Thank you very much for being here. Um, to be perfectly honest, I don't like events like this. <laughs> but uh, I was taught that um, I was trained by the Franciscans in my undergraduate. And then on my graduate level, I went with the Jesuits. So. Uh, I think that gave me a good balance between, and the Franciscans always taught me that to be humble is to admit the truth. And I think that it's in events like these where we admit the truth. And the truth is that I could not have done what I did without help of others. Um, during the 60s, when the war on poverty was going full force. As you know, the MSW was a very respectable degree. In 1965, when the war on poverty uh, was going, the MSW became a golden degree. And everybody wanted community organizers. And that was my background from Boston College uh, with those Jebbies. And I am eternally grateful to them. Um, but. In those days, communities were fighting, there were community groups fighting each other in various communities for the almighty dollar. And it was a very difficult time to work with various groups. And I used to come home, uh, and my sister Raquel, who's at the back table over there, she would have my scotch, a little <laughs> drink of scotch. And she would allow me to play my music and I love Beethoven because Beethoven massages my mind. And so in a sense, I always knew 
that I was going to be supported by loving, caring people. Working with San Jose State, uh, again, it's such a, a conglomeration of very bright people, a lot of talent, but the politics there are vicious. And I think in every university setting, there are vicious politics. So the hell with all of that, I decided I was going to join the union and I became the president of the faculty union at San Jose State. Bring a little justice into this um, Congress of Prima Donnas. <laughs> and uh, in, a, in a way, that has been my, my life. I am a firm believer in social justice and uh, Many years ago, like, what is justice? To each his due. Well, what is due to me? And you can debate that. But I was always talking about distributive justice and um, share the goods of the earth and not have them concentrated in the hands of a few. But anyway, I did not have a prepared speech. I just want to thank you because each one of you is important. You are committed to a set of values. And I think that as social workers, we have the best values in the world. Where we are missing is a vision. But we're having, we can put together a beautiful mosaic of a grand vision by events such as these. Again, thank you all of those who voted for me. And thank you, my family and friends, for having supported me. Our uh, next presenter is Jan Lee Wong. Jan Lee is a member of our Hall of Distinction Committee uh, and of course has been the executive director of the 12,000 member California chapter of NASW. Thank you, Monica, and I uh, apologize for the slight delay, but as you all know, uh, social workers are kind of the do-it-all problem solvers. And when we put things together, if we need some extra technical assistance, social workers do it. If we need to greet people, social workers do it. And then finally, more importantly, the most important thing for social workers, if we need to help people, we do it. And that brings me to talk about Jeff Jew. Jeff Jew is an incredible person. Uh, I miss him so much. There really isn't a time when I don't think about Jeff, especially when times are tough. Not so much because he's going to show me how to get through tough times, but he would always give me that feeling that uh, there are important things to life and sometimes the tough stuff is not that important. And there's other things that are more important, particularly uh, enjoying life, being human, uh, making sure that you develop and appreciate your relationships. And that really says it about Jeff. I, I, I don't know a single person, and I know a lot of social workers in California and around the country, that just does not say the best things about Jeff Jew. Uh, some of you may not know, but uh, Jeff is actually a, a person from Chinatown. You know, he's, a, he's kind of a regular person. and. He, uh, for some reason, he chose a career in social work. So he decided to go to San Francisco State, Rita Takahashi's uh, school, and uh, got his BA in social welfare. And then he went to that other school across the bay, UC Berkeley, where he got his MSW in 1970. He also uh, served our country in the Air Force. So uh, he's a, also a veteran. He began his uh, social work career as a case manager for the Community Services Division of the California Department of Mental Health in Modesto, California. So think of the Chinatown guy going to Modesto. Interesting uh, trip, but Jeff was an interesting guy. Uh, he subsequently served as the director of client services for the Western Regional Center for the Development Aid disabled in Los Angeles. So he goes from San Francisco to Modesto to LA. Uh, he subsequently 
uh, served as director in, of mental health in three counties. He served in Merced, Sonoma, and San Francisco. And I remember uh, at a memorial for Jeff, he talked about how at some of these jobs, he would not like move his whole family and move his house and everything. So he would go and share an apartment with all sorts of characters. So he had a very interesting time when he worked in these different places and he would be sharing apartments with all kinds of interesting characters. Um, he was also a tremendous educator. He taught at UC Berkeley as well as CSU Stanislaus in social policy and mental health policy. And he taught uh, executive management courses at UC Davis Extension. Uh, his culminating uh, career, uh, was, he served as the director of Stanislaus, Stanislaus County Community Services Agency, the umbrella agency in uh, Modesto, where people were just so overjoyed, he finally decided after going all over the place that he would come back to uh, Modesto and Stanislaus. And again, Jeff was that kind of guy. Uh, he re received quite a few awards but uh, he was also the consummate professional because as a social worker, you get involved with clients, you rise to supervisor, you supervise other social workers, you become an administrator, you become a manager, you become an executive, but you also want to promote the goals and values and ethics of professional social work. And one of the ways you do that is to be a member of your professional association and contribute to your professional association. So Jeff was an incredible leader of NASW, the National Association of Social Workers. He uh, served as chapter president of the California chapter, and he was by far a incredible chapter president who followed in the footsteps of uh, another wonderful chapter president here, Manuel Frimbres. So Jeff was uh, my mentor, and he was my inspiration as executive director of NASW. He also served as the director of the uh, chair of the California Mental Health Directors Association, the California Welfare Directors Association, and he also served on the national board of NASW as well as the NASW Insurance Trust. He also served on the California Social Work Education Center Board of Directors. Um, of course, when you have a guy like that, he's going to win a lot of awards. So certainly, he won NASW Social Worker of the Year Award in 1981. He received the California Conference of Local Mental Health Directors Award for Outstanding Prevention Programs in 1985, and he was uh, nominated the Outstanding Alumni of the Year by UC Berkeley in 1997. But uh, what I'm going to remember the most about Jeff uh, is not necessarily his professional career because, as I said, he was just a tremendously unusual guy and, uh, and somebody that you could just relate to right away. So when he retired, he picked up motorcycle riding and he... <laughs> He, he wasn't going to be the guy with the Harley Davidson, so he didn't get a Harley Davidson, <laughs> okay? He was going to be different. He was going to be that urbane San Francisco guy. So he got a BMW, and he joined a group of riders, and he rode all over the place. And in fact, if correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he even rode in Europe <laughs> on his motorcycle. So uh, that I'm going to remember because it just says, you know, when you retire and you've done such a career in service to others and you've helped so many people that you can still show people that there's something in life, it's got nothing to do with hard work or tragedy or serving people or welfare or mental health or all those things. As a social worker, you can go out there and have new adventures and actually in a way inspire other social workers to say, you know what? Sometimes let's not take our work so seriously. You know, let's enjoy being a human being and a person and also a social worker. So I hope you all join me in giving him a tremendous hand. And
I'd like, I'd like to ask Linda to come up and receive the plaque. Okay, I'm totally unprepared for this, and my whole family is afraid of what I'm going to say because I kept saying to them, okay, what would Jeff say? <laughs> and for those of you who knew Jeff, you knew that his language could be very colorful. But I will spare you. Um, thank you, uh, Ellen, for the nomination, and Jan Lee for the, the wonderful um, words. They were very nice. Um, and I can't help but thinking Jeff would be looking on all of you saying, what a bunch of. <laughs> um, he did what he wanted his entire life, whether it was work, um, play. And as my brother-in-law said at his memorial, I was his jail keeper, his wife, his partner, uh, the one who kept the home fire burning while he traveled all over the state, and yes, we had a commuter marriage for 10 years, and my poor daughter, Leslie, who's sitting here tonight, came home from high school one day saying, Mom, are you and Dad getting a divorce? <laughs> I go, no, why? She goes, well, kids are saying you don't live apart unless you're getting a divorce. And I go, no, they don't know your dad. <laughs> so uh, we didn't get a divorce. We just lived in lots of different communities. And they were, they were fun. They were interesting. He enjoyed them. He enjoyed everywhere he worked. He enjoyed every county he worked in. He enjoyed things I couldn't understand how he could enjoy them, but he did. Um, so with that, again, I'm just going to say thank you. This is really an honor. Um, his grandchildren will now be able to go on the internet and see more about their grandfather. Um, and again, thank you for the honor. Ben Queer, come on back up and please uh, present the induction award uh, to Ben Kelly. I've known Ben for over 30 years, and I can tell you from personal experience, he's a great person, a great human being, and an advocate for people, particularly those that are poor and disadvantaged. I, uh, when I was thinking about the, who would be the best candidate from the Central California, Central Valley area to nominate for the Hall of Distinction, Ben's name came immediately to mind. Ben is a reformer for better social services for people, particularly those who are poor and disadvantaged. He was a, he's a reformer, he was a reformer. He didn't just talk about it, he did it. He uh, worked on changes in the federal 100 hour, 100 hour work rule, he, he worked on expanding agency hours, he uh, included parents in uh, child welfare decisions, he uh, established liaison positions uh, to help the agency respond more quickly to uh, uh, client needs, he established a liaison position with the, uh, the local uh, social work program, MSW program, uh, where I was a faculty and it made, really made a difference. He, uh, he was a leader in developing a large Title 20 grant to increase the number of MSWs in the Central Valley when he first came to uh, Fresno, there was only six MSWs of the Central California region. During his time there, we increased that number by multiples, by tens, uh, and that was uh, due to a lot of his participation and leadership. He uh, had many, many decades of leadership at all levels of, of uh, social work and the profession. He was a leader of the Central Valley Social Service Directors, he was a leader of, he was actually the president one time of the California Social Service Directors Association. He made a difference in the Central Valley. His legacy still lives on there, particularly with the increased number of MSW. He helped uh, develop the mechanism to educate, and many of those are now leaders in social services, and mental health, and aging in the Central Valley. I uh, can only repeat that his 
legacy still lives on, and uh, I uh, admire him and I remember all the things that he did. Uh, I we we started there in the in the region about the same time, and uh, he was a great partner for me and for many others. Uh, he was a leader, and uh, he'll be remembered. Ben, would you please come up and get your award, and we'll. We do expect you to say a few things. I really have no pre prepared remarks. I was not prepared to speak here this evening. Uh, it's always an honor to be honored by your peers, and I feel such an honor tonight. I want to thank my family for being here to support me, particularly my beautiful wife. Thank you. Our next presenter is Ellen Dunbar. Many of you know she's a former chair of the Hall of Distinction Committee. Uh, Ellen is also a recipient of the Lifetime Achievement in Social Work from NASW in 2006. She, uh, she served as the NASW California Executive Director 1986 to 1994, and then became the director of the Masters of Social Work program at California State University in Stanislaus until 2002. Percy H. Steele graduated from North Carolina Central College in Durham and earned an MSW from Atlanta University in 1946. I think we should think for a moment what the, our world was like in 1946, particularly for an African-American man the, uh, coming into the field to do social work. Without my saying any more, you, would, you know that he had to be a pioneer. And he was. Uh, he started working with the Urban League. Uh, he served eventually as the executive director of the Morris County Urban League in New Jersey, but then California comes in. He came to San Diego in 1953, and he was the head of the Urban League in San Diego from 1953 to 1963 for 10 years. And that, what was happening in 1953 to 63, that was before the major uh, civil rights things was happening, but I'm sure many things were happening in San Diego at that time. Uh, it was said that he became a really pivotal figure uh, and, and a very significant leader in San Diego, uh, building a community, uh, working in the community. Um, it was a time when there were many African Americans moving into Sa San Diego from the South, and uh, they needed jobs, and the Urban League was working to find jobs for these, pe for these people. Um, he introduced a number of innovative programs to uh, help them to get those jobs. He uh, then became the president and CEO of the Bay Area Urban League, and where he was there for a quarter of a century, from 1964 to 1980. Percy Steele has been described as a committed consensus builder who worked with people of all races and ethnic backgrounds. Highly regarded in his profession, he was recognized for his contributions with the National Association of Social Workers, uh, Social Work Administrator of the Year in 1976 from NASW. Uh, he had the Distinguished Services Award from, um, from, the, from the National Association of Black Social Workers in 1987 and received the f uh, 50th anniversary Outstanding Alumni Award from Atlanta University School of Social Work. Uh, his community and activity and integrity were reported as impeccable, and his ability to relate to people was outstanding. He had a great understanding of social issues related to race, 
and was diligent in addressing the civil rights issues. He made a significant impact on African Americans and never wavered from his values and always operated from his own principles. I, I did not really know Percy Steele. However, I did meet him when I was a very new social worker. I came to San Francisco, and I don't remember exactly the occasion, but I do remember meeting him and being very impressed with this man and what he was doing. So his name stayed in my mind all of this time. Uh, and so I'm very happy to be able to make this award. And I believe his daughter will come up to receive this. And maybe she can say a little more personal because uh, that she knew him very well. It is with great pleasure and honor that I accept the Hall of Distinction Award on behalf of my father, Percy H. Steele, Jr. I'd like to thank the California Social Welfare Archives Committee. Um, when you mentioned that he came to California in 1953, he always told me the story of how he, um, I was late being born. I was born in 1953 in New Jersey, in Plainfield, and uh, my mom was taking a long time for delivery, so he took her on this bumpy road because he was late for a job starting in San Diego. So he took her over this bumpy road, and <laughs> lo and behold, I was born the next day. And so he got a picture of me, put it on the front seat, and drove cross country to San Diego to report to work for the Urban League. So uh, he always used to love to tell me that story. Uh, but he was very committed to his family. Uh, he loved being a social worker. He worked many, many hours um, with the Urban League, over 40 years. And um, I used to write letters to his boss in New York and say, can't my dad stay home sometime? <laughs> and, uh, uh, but he really loved it. But uh, when he was home, he was home. He was very dedicated to his family. Um, and my mom was a social worker, so it was kind of in our blood. Um, and I guess you have to love it, because you should, certainly don't get paid for being a social worker. <laughs> Not well, anyway. Um, so I know my dad would be honored and elated by this award, uh, especially because it's being recognized by his peers and a profession that he loves so very much, the profession of social work. He worked tirelessly in the profession, as I said, for over 40 years as president of several of the urban leagues, uh, New Jersey, uh, then San Diego, and then the Bay Area, covering five different counties in the Bay Area. So he was all over the place. Um, and worked with many uh, social organizations as well. So I thank you on behalf of, behalf of my dad, and I wish the organization well, and uh, it's a great honor, so thank you. Our last presenter uh, for tonight uh, is uh, Rita Takahashi who is the director of the School of Social Work at San Francisco State. Prior to her directorship there, she taught as a professor of social work at, at San Francisco State for 18 years and was also prof and was a professor at Eastern Washington University for eight years. She was a civil rights lobbyist in Washington, D.C., and has been very active with the Council on Social Work Education. Uh, she received her PhD uh, in social work and Masters of Public and International Affairs from the University of Pittsburgh and got her M MSW from the University of Michigan. Rita, will you come? Thank you very much. Good evening. It's my privilege to introduce Kunitake Morgan Yamanaka. Unfortunately, this evening, because of surgery, he's not here, but his son, John Yamanaka, will be receiving the award. I would like to introduce um, several factors about um, Kunitake Morgan Yamanaka. First of all, he was a social worker for 53 years, and he was at San Francisco State University for 44 years and I had the privilege of working with him, actually, for 17 years. 
Um, he, my best description of him is that he was a very committed social work educator and definitely a feisty advocate for change. And when I say he was a feisty advocate, um, it began when he was in concentration camps during World War II. Um, when the war broke out, he was um, at, uh, in San Francisco, and he ultimately had to go into assembly centers as well as the concentration camps. And he protested, and he ended up in the stockade for some time because of his protest against government actions. And then subsequently, after he came out of the camp, he went on for his bachelor's degree as well as his master's in social work degree from University of California, Berkeley. And uh, right after that, he took a series of positions, social work related positions, um, and they were all leadership positions. I think it's pretty amazing all of the uh, jobs that he had be before he became a social work educator. First, he worked at the International Institute of San Francisco, where he was a senior group worker. And next, he became the executive director of the Mission Community Center in San Francisco. Then the uh, director of the Mission Neighborhood Center, also in San Francisco. And then he became a faculty member in 1962 and he remained at San Francisco State University until 2006, and like I said, 44 years. He had a very distinguished career as a social work educator. He was the person who pretty much set up our field education program um, at San Francisco State, and he introduced a new course that became, I mean, it still exists today. It's kind of unique. It was a course where students would learn about all the nonprofit organizations in the Bay Area. So it was, a, it was one where the undergraduates um, got connected to all the different agencies in the area. And like I said, we still have that course today. Um, and when I said he was feisty, he was on the faculty during the 1969 strike, 68-69 strike at San Francisco State. And he certainly was a part of the rabble rousing group. Um, and also on the faculty, he was definitely uh, a person who spoke his thoughts and didn't hesitate to do so, and didn't mind being controversial when it needed to be, especially in areas of rights, what was right and just. And uh, also, he was a very unique in that he was always there. As for those of you who know academia, a lot of times faculty are not there in their offices. In fact, sometimes they're there only two days or three days a week, um, and maybe even half days, whatever, all right? I could see a lot of people relating to that. Well, Morgan was very different. He was always there. He would come to work, and he'd stay there all day. And what was really, really unique is that until he hit over 80 years of age, he was there every day. He never missed class at all. And after 80, he only missed when he had to go in for surgery and when he had a major illness. In, in fact, when he was ill, he even came to work. But if he had surgery, and that, like I said, occurred only in the, in the last three years. So I would say he was very definitely a dedicated social work educator, um, worked predominantly with the baccalaureate students, and certainly set a lot of trends and um, was a very valued faculty member for 44 years. Um, so with that, I would like to introduce John Yamanaka, his son, and um, I'm sure John will have a few additional personal things to say. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Um, on behalf of my father, he would like to say to you all that he's very honored to receive this award. 
especially as it comes from his peers, people he's worked with, in some cases, people he's educated. And that, that means a lot to him. Um, for so many memorable years in the profession of social work, to be inducted into this very prestigious Hall of Fame has had an impact on him. I wish he could be here tonight, but uh, the knee replacement was tough on him. Um, from the time in 1953 when he received his MSW till the time that he retired from San Francisco State, social work was a hallmark of my father's life. Uh, he participated not only as a group worker, a case worker, an agency director, and supervisor, but it was the type of thing that, and I'm sure this is something that, that can also be said of Mr. Fembry's, Mr. Jew's family, Mr. Kelly, and Mr. Steele's family, you'd remember at the dinner table when dad would talk about which student's getting placed here. Gosh, in, at least as far as the educators go, gosh, I got a lot of papers I got to go through tonight. Um, gosh, I wonder if I'm going to be meeting with these agency people and which students um, are doing well, which students maybe need a little bit of, a little bit of push. But um, it, it's something that permeates a lot of social workers' lives, and I think a lot of, probably everybody here can understand that. Um, my father's fondest memories of social work were being part of organizations that formed organizations such as the one we're all participating in tonight. Um, Association of Social Group Workers, American Medical Workers, Public Welfare Workers, Psychiatric Workers, um, representatives of all those groups that helped to garner other groups and increase the respect of the profession and the reach of the profession. Um, he takes great pride in the institutional aspect of social work but I think his lasting legacy will be very much be found to the individuals he worked with as well as to the general public and the people that social workers really provide the services to in his influence and the way he taught people and the way he had an impact on everybody that he did have an opportunity to work with. And that teaching and that guidance was something he took equal pride in. I, I remember vividly him talking about how his students and how people he worked with were going to go forward. And as much as, as the remembrances, I think his legacy goes on in people who are out there doing the job right now. Thank you very much. Perhaps we could have one more round of applause for our inductees tonight. <laughs> to wrap up our ceremony this evening, I'd like to introduce Esther Gillies, who is the president of the California Social Welfare Archives. Uh, in addition to CSWA, Esther serves on a number of board of directors for several organizations. Uh, she has been a director of, of a number of organizations and participated on, on numerous task forces aimed at helping uh, child victims of abuse. Uh, she worked for more than 20 years in the Los Angeles County Public Child Welfare System, most recently as the Bureau Chief for the LA County Department of Children and Family Services. Esther joined the faculty of the USC School of Social Work as a clinical associate professor in 2002 after serving as an adjunct uh, faculty at Cal State uh, University Los Angeles for more than 12 years. Esther. Thank you so much, Monica, and thank all of you for being here tonight. This is uh, by far the most inspirational program that I attend at any time during the year. It just, uh, hearing these marvelous and remarkable stories just makes me very proud to be a social worker, and I'm sure that all of the social workers in the room feel the same. Just wonderful. I'm here to tell you just a little bit about the California Social Welfare Archives. 
The archives were created in 1979 by a group of social workers who at the time were fearful that we were losing some of the, the history of social work in the state of California. And in an informal way, they began gathering materials and uh, agency papers just to make sure that the uh, evolution of social welfare in California was captured and retained for future generations, not only for basic information, but for research and historical purposes. Along the way, the archives began collecting oral histories. And today, some 30 years later, we have an oral history collection of more than 100 pioneers, social work pioneers, in the state of California. I just strongly urge you to go to the web, check out California Social Welfare Archives, and look at the numbers of people that appear on that website that have been influential in creating some of the organizations we take for granted today and being actively involved in movements that have literally changed the world in terms of social welfare in our state. Um, I also wanted this evening to make the connection between uh, Hall of Distinction and the California Social Welfare Archives. Given the, the purpose and the mission of the archives, when Jim Carls was looking for a home for the Hall of Distinction, uh, a creation and an inspiration that was moved by Jim several years ago, the archives provided a logical place for the Hall of Distinction to find a home. And so as of 2002, the Hall of Distinction has been a part of the California Social Welfare Archives. And tonight, in addition to celebrating the induction of our five remarkable inductees, we also want to remember three of our members who over the past year have left us. Number one, Jim Carls, the ins ins inspiration or the person with the inspiration for the Hall of Distinction. Um, Jim was a lifelong member of the, Hall, of the NASW, a social work activist, and an inductee into the Hall in 2008. Diana Ming Cheng, uh, working very actively with immig immigrants and their American-born children. Diana was a policy advocate, a social work mentor, instructor, and many, many more things, and an inductee in the Hall of Distinction in 2007. And Francis Loman, Lomas Feldman, one of the key figures in the development of the social welfare archives, as well as uh, an inductee into the Hall of uh, uh, Distinction, it was a pioneer in psychosocial effects of cancer, the impact of work on family life, and a significant force in the creation of CSWA. She was inducted into the Hall of Distinction in 2005. Our Hall of Distinction is a private nonprofit organization, which many of you are familiar with. Many of you have worked in them. Many of you have created uh, nonprofit organizations. And today, like many other nonprofit organizations, we are dependent upon donations and uh, the contributions of supporters for our continued existence. So just a slight little um, advertisement here on the table. There are some little envelopes. And if you are so inclined, uh, we would very much appreciate donations to the cause to ensure that we can continue our work of archiving the social work history in this state, as well as continuing the Hall of Distinction. And last but not least, I want to thank you so much for being here and sharing with us in this celebration tonight. And I look forward to seeing many of you again next year. This is an annual event. Next year, our celebration will be in Southern California, but we'll be back two years from now back in Northern California. So we look forward to seeing you as a visitor to our website and as guests at the Hall of Distinction Ceremonies in 2010. Thank you and good evening. I'm very, very proud of him because he always cared for people. Don't make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> Little kiss, <so. laughs>